Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Time Travel. Now in today's episode we're going to be heading back to the year 2004 and taking a look at Google Desktop. Now if you've never heard of Google Desktop, it allowed you to search for files on your computer through a, it was kind of like a desktop-ish application, but it was a web-based application. And it later evolved into a sidebar, it had like a whole interface with gadgets or widgets, and it was really cool because this was in the early 2000s, and this was really before Windows had a sidebar, it was before Windows had gadgets, and uh, it was just really, really neat. So we're going to be taking a look at a couple versions of this today, and we're going to start with the very first beta release that was released in late 2004. And I'll have all of the links to the versions that we take a look at today down in the video description you can actually download them from uh, oldversion.com which is a website that hosts uh, as you can probably tell from the name all sorts of older versions of various applications so this right here is the download page this is an archived uh, snapshot from October 16th 2004 and this is what it looked like right here so it was a very basic web page and these right here are the file types that it can search for and it did all of this through an interface that would be very familiar to someone who uses Google because it was literally the exact same interface, and we'll get into that in a moment. So I've got a Windows XP virtual machine set up here. These are the three versions we're gonna be taking a look at. But before we uh, start doing that, I wanna show you these three sample documents that I've got. We've got a Word document set up. So here's my super important Word document. I've got my totally real finances sheet here, and we've got Clippy coming up as usual. Uh, this is Office XP, by the way, if you're interested. Um, because yes, it can search through these files, which is pretty nice. And here here is our uh, wonderful PowerPoint document. So we're going to start with the very first version right here. And just to show you, if we go into properties, this was digitally signed by Google on Friday, December 10th, 2004, 745 uh, and 15 seconds p.m. So we're going to go ahead and just run it here. Now, the first thing you'll see is it'll come up with this message box asking you uh, that, well, that it needs to enable the Internet Explorer add-ons feature to work properly. And that is because the initial version essentially lives in Internet Explorer. It's not its own application. And you'll kind of see what I'm talking about momentarily here. So we'll go ahead and click OK. It will install it and it's going to launch the preferences page any moment here. And here is that preferences page right here. And Yes, as you can see, the entire interface is contained within Internet Explorer. So this is essentially a web-based application, but there is this uh, little tray applet right here, which we'll get into in a moment. So uh, this is where you can make modifications to the program. You can specify which file types you want to allow it to search for. You've got a blacklist right here where you can choose to, you know, not allow it to search for certain file types or certain uh, directories on your system or even certain domains and, you know, websites. And uh, yeah, so you can customize these settings however you want. And to show you, if I go to uh, view page source here, uh, yes, this is an HTML document, obviously. This little applet down here serves as obviously a status indicator as well as a quick little menu to where you can get access to certain parts of the program, which are all web pages. So if I hover over it, it'll let me know if it's currently indexing or not, which it currently is. If I click on it, it'll open up this little jump list or menu right here. And search is obviously going to be the main interface. That's why it's in bold. Preferences we were just in. Status, if we click on this, it'll let you know how many items that it has indexed. So it gives you a list of all those files here. And then you've got about, which will display about information, you know, the version number. So this is Google Desktop Search Beta 121004. I'm guessing that's a build number. Then you've got some links to a few web pages. Uh, all of the web pages that are hosted on google.com are not there anymore. If I were to click on this, it'll actually take me to a page that says, Google Desktop has been discontinued, which I'm kind of surprised they still have that up. But like this right here, this privacy uh, option is a locally hosted page. And here's all of your privacy settings right here. And uh, if you weren't able to tell, uh, this is the web address that you go to, which is 127.0.0.1, which is just localhost, and the port number is 4664. So this is where, I mean, basically any link in here that points to 127.0.0.1 is a locally hosted page. So let's take a look at the search interface itself, and you can do this through double-clicking on the icon on the desktop or by going into the system tray icon that we just took a look at. And here it is. 
So this is designed to look like a standard Google search page from 2004, and it really accomplishes that. Obviously, there are some slight modifications to the logo. It's got the Google desktop icon here. It says desktop search beta, but you've got some links here like to Google web search, images, groups, news, frugal, which doesn't exist anymore, and more to view all of Google's products. You've got a desktop preferences link, which opens up the preferences page. You've got two search buttons because this is a unified search box you can perform a local search or search the web with Google and then you've got some information down here and a link to set this as your home page which you would want to do if you wanted to access this pretty easily now it seems to be taking a while to index all the files on my system if I were to do a search for important which is part of the title of that word document it won't find anything, but I promise you this worked normally before. This right here, if you weren't able to tell, is a Google search results page like from 2004. So this was designed to kind of, again, mimic the regular Google search interface. We can also search for web pages that I previously went to. So I can do a search for Google and it will bring up all of the web pages I've navigated to with Google in it. So this just kind of allows you to view and search your web history, which is pretty cool. And it will tell you the types of files that it's found up here. So, and then you can sort them by like if you only want the web history. Now you can also search the web. So if I do a search for YouTube and click on search the web, it will pull a Google search results page. Obviously, i.e. A tier is going to display the mobile search results page because the regular one does not display correctly because this is a pretty old browser, but here it is. But the entire interface is contained within the web browser. There's no sidebar, really the only um, interface outside of the web browser is this system tray icon right here, which just has shortcuts to open up the various web pages. But all of that changed in beta two, which came out in late 2005, about a year later. And here is what the download page looked like at that point in time. So this snapshot is from November 30th, 2005. And you can see that compared to the original one, there's been a lot of changes. For one, there's actually an image of a sidebar right here. And the sidebar would become one of the main, if not the main interface for Google Desktop. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. Now what's nice is uh, installing newer versions is really, really simple because it will detect if an older version is already installed and just update it for you just like that. And then all we have to do is restart. And when we log back in, we will see the new sidebar interface. So we've restarted here, and the first thing that you're going to be presented with is a web page. Let me just get out of Security Center here. Now you've got three different interfaces that you can choose from. The sidebar is obviously what I would assume most people would want to use because it contains all of the widgets and it's just what I would prefer personally, what I think most people would prefer. But there's also a desk bar, which is just a little search box in your task bar. And then you have the floating desk bar, which is just the desk bar in its own little window that you can move around, kind of like a widget of its own. So we're going to select a uh, sidebar here and we're going to click on set preferences and continue. Now the sidebar is considered an advanced feature which requires more data collection. So it kind of tells you what that means here. It says that it sends Google information about the news pages you visit in order to personalize the news you see in the sidebar. And uh, yeah, so if you weren't comfortable with this, you wouldn't be able to use the sidebar, but we're going to click on enable advanced features and then go to the Google desktop homepage. Now the main search interface remains in in Internet Explorer, as you can see here, but obviously we have the new sidebar over here. So I can still perform searches. There's been more items indexed now, so I could probably search for like finances, click on search or hit enter, and it pulls up my finances Excel document here, and I can launch it uh, just like, you know, launching any other file on my computer. But uh, obviously the sidebar is what we're going to be focusing on for this version because it is, you know, where most of the changes lie. So it has, you know, you've got all these widgets here or gadgets. I'm going to probably use the terms interchangeably. So you can move them around and rearrange them however you want. You cannot drag them off of the sidebar, though. You can see they automatically will just bounce back to the sidebar. You would be able to do this in future versions, though. Now, because this program is obviously discontinued, it's been out of support for many years now, a lot of the web-based widgets don't work properly anymore and that's just to be expected maps here you can see will indefinitely say connecting to server so I can't really do anything with this 
news here will say loading indefinitely it will not display any news the only one i found that still works is web clips this i don't know what it was supposed to do originally but now it just displays every new official google blog posting and you can see this is current stuff so like this is a post from five hours ago and it wouldn't load in internet explorer 8 but you'll be able to see that this is a current post published on November 10th, 2020. But all of the ones that don't rely being connected to the internet, like Scratchpad, this is like a notepad here, so I can, you know, say, hello world, this is my super important notes. Uh, it's not really like a to-do list, but it's just like, you know, a little notepad. Photos, you can obviously add photos to display here. Um, I believe you can go to options and you can select between photos online or photos on my computer. Although I do have the, the My Pictures folder is already in here, which has photos in it, so it should, it should display them. You can also view about information for every single one of these widgets. So here's the Google Desktop Photos plugin. Uh, I guess they were called plugins formally at this time, but they would uh, be called widgets or gadgets in the future. Uh, quick view, this right here is, this is actually pretty cool. So this is a list of all of your, your recent documents and web pages that you've accessed. So uh, you can, like if I were to open up uh, my Word document here and I close out of it, you can see that it now adds itself to the list here. So this is just a way to access, you know, the recent documents and also web pages that, uh, that you've recently browsed to. Weather, uh, unfortunately, does not work anymore. Uh, if it wants to show here, uh, I think you can just restore it like that. Um, and yeah, it just it just does not work anymore. It uh, will just say, apparently it's defaulted to Honolulu, Hawaii. But if I want to type in like, you know, New York, click on add, uh, server not available. So yeah, whatever uh, they were using to display weather information, uh, it's not available anymore. And this right here, uh, this is the What's Hot widget, and it indefinitely displays Google Desktop is no longer available. So uh, this used to display, you know, like what's trending or what's hot, you know, like headlines, it says right here. Um, but uh, yeah, now it just displays Google Desktop has been discontinued. And then right here you have a to-do list. So this is obviously similar to the scratch pen, but it's an actual list, so we can restore it here. And uh, you can also, if you weren't able to tell, this little arrow will pop it out and give you a little pop out, which uh, is kind of a much larger interface. So, you know, I can say make video, and then let's add a new one. Let's uh, edit video. And there you go. So yeah, and I can check these off as I do them. And yeah, it's super simple. Now down here you have the instant search interface. And this is really cool because keep in mind, this was before instant search was a feature in Windows. That would not be a thing until Windows Vista, where you had, when you would open up the start menu, you had that little search box right at the bottom, which displayed instant search results as you typed. Mac OS X had Spotlight, which was introduced the same year as this in 2005. And uh, that was in Mac OS 10.4 Tiger, but Windows wouldn't get it until about a year later when Vista came out. So I could do a search for, let's say, PowerPoint here, or just Power, and it will display all of the relevant results. So it displays programs, documents, and also control panel applets. You can choose to search more by clicking here, and you can choose to search, you know, local, search frugal, search Google News, Google Groups, Google Images, I'm feeling lucky, or just search desktop, which will just open up the full uh, desktop search results page here. And uh, you can also just do a web search from right here, which will obviously open up a Google search results page. But yeah, this was really, really awesome. And uh, yeah, just super convenient. And you can obviously launch programs from here. Like if I do a search for, you know, control panel, can go up here, hit enter, boom, there's there's control panel. So it really functions just like the uh, Windows Vista instant search box does, which is really nice. Obviously, it's just over here as opposed to being down here. But you can what you can do if you want to only use the search box, you can change the interface by clicking on this arrow right here and changing it to desk bar. So that will bring the search box down here to the task bar. And I believe if we were to unlock the task bar, we can change the size of it if we want it to be kind 
kind of large. Uh, so we can maybe set it there and we'll lock the taskbar. And I can do that same search from here. So if that's really all you wanted to use and you didn't really care about the sidebar, you could absolutely change that. And you can also change it to the floating desk bar, which will be just this little box that you can move around. This essentially is like minimizing the sidebar. That's really all it does. So you can click on this maximize button right here to restore the sidebar. Now, the sidebar itself uh, can be on either the right side or the left side of your screen. So if you preferred it over here, uh, you can do that. You see we got a little bit of glitching with the wallpaper here. So it could not be stored on the top of the screen or on the bottom, but it's obviously called the sidebar. So, you know, it's meant to be stored on the side of the screen. You can see when we move it around, we get some weird uh, glitching going on with the desktop wallpaper. We can just fix that by refreshing the desktop. So this is what Google Desktop looked like back in 2005. Now, just to point out a couple of limitations here, you could not, as I already mentioned, move these widgets or as they were officially called at the time, plugins freely around the desktop. They were only uh, to be kept in the sidebar. So I already showed you what happens when you try to drag one out here. There was also no easy way to add additional plugins to it. So there was no like interface from within Google sidebar that you could go to to add additional plugins. Google did have an API that they opened up and allowed developers to create plugins or what would eventually become Google gadgets. Uh, and we'll see that in the next release of Google Desktop. And that is beta 4.5 from late 2006. So about a year after beta 2 was released. And you can see that one of the largest changes is the design of the sidebar itself, because it now has some transparency going on. Kind of reminds you of Aeroglass transparency. Uh, a lot of the plugins got redesigned as well. You can see the weather plugin here has completely changed. Uh, and these other plugins have kind of been redesigned with a transparency transparent or translucent-ish interface. And the names of the plugins have changed from plugins to Google Gadgets. Now, these were also available on the iGoogle homepage. You remember that? Yeah, that was that customizable homepage that Google offered. Uh, it's not around anymore, but you could also use Google Gadgets on your customizable homepage, which was pretty cool. But obviously, from this webpage, you can see they could be used in Google Desktop as well. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a copy of this version because the specific version I was looking for, I could not find on oldversion.com, but we are going to take a look at the very last version of Google Desktop to be released, and that was version 5.9. It was out of beta at this point, and this was released in March of 2010. You can see the sidebar got completely redesigned. Honestly, looks a little bit more like the Windows Vista sidebar. All of the gadgets have been redesigned as well. Here's that instant search interface. It's still here as well. And uh, yeah, so this was the, like I said, the very last version that uh, Google released before discontinuing it. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. So we've got the version right here. We're going to install it and uh, it will just like the second version that we took a look at, it will update it and ask us to restart the computer. So we'll do that. So one of the most notable things, obviously, aside from the redesigned sidebar and gadgets is the fact that the preferences page no longer opens up in Internet Explorer, or at least this desktop features page. So uh, you can choose if you want to have enhanced search, if you want to have the sidebar display at all, and if you want to have Google set as your home page. Now, if I were to go to this icon in the uh, system tray here, you can see that there are a lot uh, more options. Now, the main search interface is still contained in the web browser. So this is it right here. And honestly, like I said, it has remained unchanged uh, from the very first version that, uh, that we took a look at. But I would presume that most people using this were using it for the sidebar, especially if you had Windows XP and wanted to kind of make it look more like Windows Vista, which was a very popular thing to do at the time I did it myself, because Vista was, you know, there was a lot of eye candy, the arrow interface was super cool, and everybody was like, oh, I want to make my machine look like Vista without buying Windows Vista. You've got this message right here, it says, thank you for installing Google Desktop, here are some ways which you can use it. You can press control twice to show the quick search box, so this was another nice feature. If I press the control key twice, it brings up this uh, kind of like honestly a modern spotlight search interface in Mac OS. So it's right in, in the center of the screen, I can do a search for, you know, PowerPoint, and it will display instantaneous results once again. So yeah, this literally looks like the spotlight search interface or functions like it. Um, that we have in modern versions of Mac OS. And it's very easily accessible just by pressing the control key uh, two times. 
Now, the sidebar, as I said, got completely redesigned. And one of the nice things is these gadgets were no longer limited to being in the sidebar. I could drag them uh, onto the desktop. So I can have this over here. If you want to have this photos thing, maybe right here. If you want to keep the sidebar interface, but move the instantaneous search box right down here, you can do that. You are totally free to move these wherever you want. And again, a lot of the web based widgets do not work. So for example, here's the pretty cool weather widget that I kind of wish would work. We could take a look at, but uh, the server doesn't exist anymore. So it's not going to be able to find anything. And uh, this, I believe, is uh, the Maps interface that is just loading indefinitely, just to verify that. Uh, no, this is the news gadget, actually. Now, I mentioned before that older versions did not have the ability to add new gadgets from within Google Desktop itself. Well, this version has that functionality, and you can access it by clicking on the plus button up here. And this brings up this add gadgets window, and you've got uh, a few gadgets here. Now, there's not a whole lot of them. You've got 12 gadgets on this first page and only one on the second page, so there's 13 in total. But you've got all these categories here. So if you only wanted to see news related ones, here you go. If you only wanted to see finance related ones, here you go. And I can just add them. So the stocks uh, widget, because, and again, I'm using widget and gadget interchangeably here, because it is a network based widget, like it relies on having to connect to a server uh, that doesn't exist anymore, it doesn't display any active stock information. But you can still like this analog clock widget, this obviously will work totally fine because it just pulls from the system time. So it is showing the current time. And uh, you know, you've got your pop out interface here, just like in the older versions. And we can go to uh, about here, view the about information, and we can move it say we want it over here. We can do that. You've got things like a system monitor widget, again, very similar to a lot of the default gadgets that come included with Vista. Vista also had an analog clock like this and a uh, system monitor that, that displayed, you know, current system usage statistics uh, just in a little bit of a nicer interface here. It wasn't just like this. It actually looked kind of similar to the clock here. But yeah, that's what you would be able to do from this window right here. And honestly, guys, that is a brief look at Google Desktop. Now, this entire program was discontinued back in 2011. Now, around this time, operating systems already had system-wide search that was easily accessible. We already mentioned that Mac OS 10.4 Tiger brought Spotlight Search uh, to the Mac in 2005. And uh, obviously dashboard was a thing by that point as well. And Windows Vista already had a sidebar with gadgets and instantaneous search in the start menu. So there was really no need for a program like Google Desktop. And that was one of the reasons that Google decided to discontinue it that year. But there you have it, guys. That is a look back at Google's discontinued desktop search interface. Hopefully you all enjoyed this episode. If you did, definitely be sure to give it a thumbs up be sure to get subscribed down below and to turn on those channel notifications if you haven't already to get notified whenever i upload a new video which i do multiple times every single week on this channel and as always guys i want to thank you all so much for watching and i will see you in the next video